Welcome to Zadara Storage. Today we're going to see how to search and purchase the Cube and Cube products. The Cube is a preset, high-performance, redundant storage built on our VPSA technology. It's accompanied with 24-hour, world-class support and a wealth of technical resources and use case information. If you have any questions or need support at any time, please visit our support resources at support.zadarastorage.com. Okay, let's start. So first we go to the AWS Marketplace. We enter Zadar Cube to search for the Zadar Cube product. Here we can see a list of different Zadar Cubes we can choose from. Right now, for this demonstration, we are going to use a 6 terabyte cube. On the Zadara NAS Cube page, we can see all of the details related to the product. Product description, product details, Instructions, support details, and of course the end user license agreement. There's also a list of the different available regions in the drop down menu. Click continue. Here you can see the two types of launches manual and quick launch, and all of the configurations for the launch the version, the region, the EC2 instance type, the VPC settings. In some cases, you may have just the default VPC if you haven't created any yet, which is fine. The VPC you choose should have access to the internet. Security groups, we allow HTTP and HTTPS by default in order to access the cube web status and configuration portal. Also, make sure you have a key pair, which is required. If you don't have a key pair, set one up. Click the launch button and see the final set of instructions, which basically tells us to log into the cube status and configuration page. In the case you do want to cancel your subscription, you have to stop and terminate the instance, then click the cancel button to terminate your service. In our AWS EC2 control panel, we look at our newly started service. We can see our IP and instance ID. We are going to tag the instance. You can call it whatever you would like. We are going to use the product name so we can easily recognize the instance. We will copy the IP address of the instance now that the instance is running. We will use our browser and in this case type HTTPS with the proper IP address. You may see a warning for the secure access. This is fine because the instance uses a self-signed certificate. There is also HTTP access However, this will not be secure, so use at your own discretion. When you log into the instance, you will see an immediate warning. This is to enable instance termination protection. This instance provides a keep alive to your storage and lets us know that your cube is still in use. If this instance is stopped or terminated, your storage will be removed. If, for any reason, it is accidentally removed, please contact support. Now that the termination protection is enabled, we can log into the EC2 instance, and for this, we will use our instance ID, including I- Now that we've logged in, we see a form and we add our information. Although the information is not required, it is important that it's included in case we need to contact you with support issues regarding your product. So we're going to click Create Cube and there will be a delay. Again, you will see a warning that we do not want to disable the instance and below you can see the status of the cube deployment. This page will keep you aware of your cube status as it is deployed. When the deployment is complete, the cube will give you information on how to connect to your storage cube. We'd like to remind you that the cube will take up to 20 minutes. However, this can vary depending on AWS resources and provisioning time. During the provisioning process, the Cube is preparing your VPSA storage on our cloud and the neighboring data center along with connectivity to your EC2 VPC. This allows all of the instances or VPN nodes running in the VPC to have access to your storage. Okay, now our Cube is ready. Here we can see a link to set up information. We have the management URL and IP, which provides connectivity to the Cube Shares and Cube VPSA GUI, the EC2 VPC ID associated with the cube, and as we mentioned before, everything in the VPC will be available to the cube. 
the admin username and temporary passcode for use to log into the GUI, and of course, the mount export paths. Before we can mount our storage, connectivity to the Zadar cloud needs to be set up. You can find this information from the Zadar Cube and AWS online resource, or from our next video titled Connection to the Cube. This concludes our video. Thanks again, and we'll see you on our next video. Please contact support if you have any questions or need additional information regarding Zadar storage products. See you later.